aren't the droids you're looking for. In fact, you might have completely missed these robots, spaceships, and dystopias, but you should definitely give them a chance. It can't. Yeah, but in the spaceship they call it an unknown entry event. Unknown. Welcome to WatchMojo.com, and today we're counting down our picks for the top 10 underrated science fiction movies. Whatever is causing these mutations is not from outer space. For this list, we'll be looking at films that deserve a higher rating, or that should have had a larger audience. Where is Zemus now? Somewhere in their ship. If he's still alive. Number 10, 2010. Also known as 2010 The Year We Make Contact, this sequel to Stanley Kubrick's classic 2001 A Space Odyssey is likewise based on Arthur C. Clarke's writing, but doesn't get nearly as much attention as it deserves. What about it? We know that sequels are often terrible, but this is definitely an exception to the rule. American and Russian astronauts head to Jupiter, trying to understand what happened to the first ship that attempted the mission, and what went wrong with the sentient computer, HAL. HAL, who the hell is sending this? I'm sorry, Dr. Floyd, I don't know. Not only is this film well-acted, action-packed, and beautifully filmed, but it tackles a lot of mysteries that the original left conspicuously unanswered. Do you recognize these objects? Yes. They are identical in size and shape to the object you call the monolith. Number 9. Primer You know that story about how NASA spent millions of dollars developing this pen that writes in zero-g? Did you ever read that? Yeah. How Russia solved the problem? Uh, yeah, they used a pencil. This micro-budgeted movie is a complicated film that puts a lot of faith in its audience's intelligence. The premise is simple enough, two guys build a time machine and try to use it to make money, but it becomes very complex in the telling. You're supposed to see that. I'm not like that. I'm not, I'm not into the whole destiny, there's only one right way. Babe, I'm not either, okay? But what's worse, you know, thinking you're being paranoid or knowing you should be? Primer delves deeply into all the classic time travel issues, like what happens if you change something in the past or if you run into yourself in another time. So then, at that moment, since my double was on the way to the hotel room in my car, I had to take a taxi home. Like we said, the movie, written by a former engineer, doesn't dumb things down. And while it's a complex watch, it's worth it. If we could travel to the future, we would certainly find that Primer goes down in history as a classic. If you ditch work this afternoon and promise to do the few small things that I ask you, I will in return show you the most important thing that any living organism has ever witnessed. Number 8. Heavy Metal Very few escape my grasp. Even in death, my powers continue. It may be an animated film, but it certainly wasn't made for kids. Heavy Metal features several different storylines, all set in different times and different places, linked only by the ever-present Loch Nair, a physical manifestation of evil. From one war to another, my influence is always present. The paltry armies of the universe Oh, but They're also linked by their use of, you guessed it, heavy metal music by some of the biggest acts of all time, including Black Sabbath, <laughs> Blue Oyster Cult, and Sammy Hagar. Though this anthology film received mixed reviews at the time of its release, it has since developed a cult following. We figure that's at least in part thanks to its extreme violence, nudity, and sexuality. I've been programmed to be fully proficient in sexual activities. Do you want to go steady? Gee, I don't know. I already have a boyfriend. Number 7. Mr. Nobody What was it like when humans were mortal? This artistic drama combines a great story with fascinating ideas and excellent cinematography. Not to mention Jared Leto's stunning performance as Nemo Nobody, the last mortal human in the world. What did I do to deserve this? In a society where science has eradicated death and old age, Nemo fascinates the immortal humans that surround him. Mr. Nobody is 117 years old and he has not been telomerized. And why not? He's a man with a past that's contradictory and jumbled. I'm sorry, I, I don't understand. Did you stay with your father or go with your mother? The movie was a bust at the box office, but has been steadily gaining viewership ever since. And not just among immortals. It's a story about choices and time, emotionally weaved together by great acting and effects. I'm Mr. Nobody. 
a man who doesn't exist. Number six, silent running. On Earth, everywhere you go, the temperature is 75 degrees. Everything is the same. All the people are exactly the same. Imagine a live action version of Wally made for adults, and you've got something pretty close to silent running. You will answer to the name of Huey. In the film, plant life can no longer grow on Earth, and the last samples are now housed in spacecraft orbiting Saturn. What happens when the crew, including botanist Freeman Lowell, are ordered to destroy the last remaining greenhouses in order to make room for standard cargo? Freeman disobeys, of course, and teams up with three drones named Huey, Dewey, and Louie to protect the last forest at all costs. Look, I don't I care about you. your schedule. You are not using those things in my forest. Listen, I ain't got time to argue. Now move! You're not gonna do it. Okay, we know that environmental destruction is a common theme in science fiction, but rarely is it presented as compellingly as it is in this movie. We sure got our work cut out for us, but I think that the three of us together as a team, we can, we can manage okay. Number five, Equilibrium. But I, being poor, I've only my dreams. Emotion and art are so threatening to the leaders of society in Equilibrium that they're illegal. Taking no chances, the leaders also force citizens to take drugs that suppress all feelings and artistic impulses. It has delivered us from pathos, from sorrow, the deepest chasms of melancholy and hate. That may sound a little familiar, but it's presented in a totally absorbing manner. It's real. Burn it. The cinematography and the production design are key, creating a dark, unsettling ambiance for this dystopian vision of humanity's future. Not only that, the stylized fight scenes combine gun work with martial arts to create truly impressive action sequences. There's also an adorable puppy. What's not to like? Without love, without anger, without sorrow, breath is just a clock ticking. Number four. Strange Days. God damn it, you know I don't deal in snuff! Strange is a good word to describe this film's combination of rock and roll, cyberpunk, and odd drug addictions. <sighs> but as it's directed by Catherine Bigelow with some writing, production, and editing work by her ex-husband James Cameron, it's strange in a fascinating, artistic, entertaining way. Are you beginning to see the possibilities here? Ray Fiennes plays a small-time criminal who records people's memories and sells them on the black market. But he gets in trouble when he picks up the memories of various murders. He makes us see our own death, feeds off the reaction. He records it all, everything. And gives it to you. What follows is simply mesmerizing. Don't be put off because it didn't do so well in theaters. Strange Days is definitely worth your time. Look, everybody needs to take a walk to the dark end of the street sometimes. It's what we are. Now, the rest are out of the line. Number three, Existence. What precisely is the goal of the game that we're playing now? You have to play the game to find out why you're playing the game. Brought to us by body horror master David Cronenberg, this is another virtual reality film, but it's certainly not just another virtual reality film. Where are our real bodies? Are they all right? What if they're hungry? What if there's danger? The use of nightmare fuel organic material, like bioports and guns made out of bone and flesh, make it a truly creepy and thought-provoking movie. It's a mental thing. It helps me focus. The characters in this near-future setting voluntarily use bioports to enter a virtual world. But once there, they slowly lose their grasp of reality. You're gonna pour it into me while I'm paralyzed? You want to play my game, didn't you? The plot masterfully uses its imagery to tackle ideas of consciousness, the relationship between nature and science, and what it means to be human, making this twisty sci-fi an essential gamer movie. Hey, tell me the truth. Are we still in the game? Number two, Sunshine. No great drama. We are flying into the dead zone seven days sooner than we thought. The sun is going out. So a team of international astronauts is sent to reignite it. Do I have to spell it out for you? We have a payload to deliver to the heart of our nearest star. 
We're delivering that payload because that star is dying, and if it dies, we die. The film throws all these characters into a very claustrophobic environment and forces them to deal with the sun's incredible power to both give life and to destroy. Fire and oxygen garden. But it also focuses on how the actions of one individual can similarly decide the fate of an entire planet. May that person best qualified to understand the complexities of the payload delivery. Our physicist. The acting is great, the CGI is well done, and director Danny Boyle skillfully builds it all to a suspenseful and exhilarating climax that helps make this one a must-watch. Before we unveil our number one pick, here are some honorable mentions. I'll bet you if you put a laser micrometer on this thing, you'd find that it was a perfect sphere. This ship has the power to create a planet, to create a new home. Now you understand any English toad face? Extremely bad timing. Нужно только сосредоточиться и постараться вспомнить всю свою жизнь. Number one, Moon. Hey, thanks for this, this is good. Our choice for the most underrated science fiction movie will keep you on the edge of your seat, make you love the characters, and seriously mess with your head. Three years is a long haul, you know, it's way, 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 way too long. <laughs> Sam Bell has spent three years completing a mission alone on the moon, with only a robot for company. Sam, you said it was the TV that distracted you, but when I came in, the TV wasn't on. Perhaps you were imagining things. He's all set to return home when things start going wrong. For the most part, Sam Rockwell is the only actor on screen, and he does a brilliant job at keeping the tension high and the action dynamic. You tell me who that is! Sam Bell. We need to get him to the infirmary immediately. Like all great science fiction, Moon is an exciting adventure that sheds light on the human condition and forces you to question your sense of reality. Don't miss it. We're, we're not programmed. We're people. You understand? Do you agree with our list? And you will. I know I will. What's your favorite underrated science fiction movie? She doesn't have to talk for what I want to do with her. For more exhilarating top tens published every day, be sure to subscribe to WatchMojo.com. Oh. Shit. Not without incident.